Okay, hey everyone, this is going to be a overview video of the Team Builder platform. Um, this will be done in the context of a sport or a team uh, performance coach, strength and conditioning coach. Now we also have another video that does an overview within the context of a private facility or a gym or a personal trainer. Um, I'm going to be moving pretty quickly through this as it's going to be a summary of our platform. If you want a more comprehensive understanding of the team builder platform, I would actually recommend that you book a 30 minute demo and I'll include a link to where you can do that uh, wherever this video is posted. So I'm logged into our team builder demo account. And when I do an overview, the first thing I go over is here in coach tools, I go to the exercise database. Now the exercise database is a place where a coach can create as many exercises as they would like they can add their own videos as well. And then for those who subscribe to the Platinum Plan, they can also take advantage of the 700 exercises and videos that we provide in that plan. And we also provide over 70 training templates in that plan as well. So just know that when you have a Team Builder account, you can add as many exercises as you would like. You can add videos, you can select the tracking type, and you can even organize your exercises by tags. Um, the exercise database actually breaks up into many different buckets. So speed, agility, quickness, and conditioning is its own bucket. As you can see, we have many buckets within the exercise database. Now, the next thing is, is the managed calendar. So calendars is what we refer to as a way to write programs and distribute them to athletes. So being that this is our team account, you can see our calendars are made up of teams and the sub calendars are made up of in this case, position groups, but it could be done a variety of ways. It could be done by developmental group or any kind of subgroup that you want. The way this works is through what we, what we call the trickle-down effect. So the trickle-down effect means that if I write a workout on the baseball calendar, it will trickle down to all the subgroups underneath it. And then I have the opportunity to modify the training program for these subgroups. There's even a third tier, and that's referred to as the individual tier. And that is to modify or edit programs for individual athletes as well. So just know that you can build three tiers of programming uh, for a given team or for a given population of athletes. The last thing we'll cover as far as our quote unquote starting steps is manage users. And this is where we add athletes and coaches. So the simplest way to add an athlete or a coach is to type in first name, last name, and email. We also have a tool called Easy Join Code where Team Builder will create a code that you can give out to athletes. They can download the Team Builder app on their mobile device. They can enter the code and then sign themselves onto your Team Builder account. How many athletes you can add depends on which plan you subscribe to. And then as far as coaches, we don't put a limit on how many coaches you can add. So you can add as many coaches to a Team Builder account as you would like. Additionally, when you add coaches, you can limit their permissions. So if you are an admin, and you'd like to add a sports coach, but you don't want the sports coach to edit programming, you can restrict that for a coach among some other features as well. So once you're done creating some exercises, creating some calendars and adding athletes and coaches into Team Builder, then we primarily get into programming. And programming is done by selecting a calendar. So in this case, I'll choose baseball. And then we can use this daily view or we can come down to this week view. So when programming, I simply need to pick a day. So in this case, I'll pick Friday the 12th and I'll begin writing a session for that day. I can click add exercise. And for that day, I can add a lift. I can add speed, agility, quickness, and conditioning. I can add a circuit. I can add what we call sports science questionnaires. These are questionnaires that you create uh, on a custom basis. You can ask about sleep, wellness, readiness, soreness, whatever you'd like. You can add a note. You can add a warm up, and then we actually have some more options you can add into a training program as well. Things like recording body weight or prescribing rest time um, or just inserting videos of your own within the session. So, for this example, I'll add a lift. In this case, I'll choose barbell back squat, and then I can choose my sets, I can choose my reps. I could even type in the letter C for custom reps, which allows me to customize the rep scheme for each set. And then click the percentage icon and add a percentage for each set as well. And when I do this, this will actually pull from the athlete's one rep max and prescribe a load. 
you can enter the athlete's one rep maxes into Team Builder, or you can allow Team Builders to actually produce a one rep max based on the athlete's training data. So we use two one rep max formulas. You choose one, and then as athletes train, we will update the training max if the athlete is getting stronger based on their training sets. Workout grouping is for supersets. Rep tempo is for the rep tempo. And rest time is rest in between sets, and I can add that in. So when I build something like back squat on Friday the 12th, since I built it on the baseball parent calendar, what will happen is, is it will trickle down to all the sub calendars. So if I go to pitchers, you can see they inherit barbell back squat from the baseball calendar. But if I want the pitchers to do some shoulder work in between sets, I can prescribe that specifically to the pitchers. So if I say three by six each arm and add that in, now the pitchers have some additional exercises uh, that the other groups don't have. Uh, in that same vein, if I go to the third tier, I can go down to an individual like Mel Clark, who is a pitcher, and say Mel pitched Thursday night, he pitched a full game, and really he's not uh, able to do this kind of volume today. I could come in here and maybe just shorten his volume down a little bit and say he'll be doing three by five across the board, and I'll just set his percentages to be an even 75 for each set. So when I save that, now I've made a modification to an individual, and that's the three-tier system at play. Now, when you write training programs, athletes can retrieve them a number of ways. One is through a tool called Weight Room View. So Weight Room View is a module that will go on a tablet or a computer in the weight room, and it will actually allow multiple athletes to train off of the same screen. So this is a way of going paperless in the weight room, it's a way to give each individual athlete their own training program, and it collects all the data in the weight room without having to use a smartphone app. If you do want to use a smartphone app, we have a free app for iOS and Android, and that app will allow each individual to access their training program digitally. They can fill out a questionnaire. They can view their training program, enter in their data. They can also view a video of each exercise. They can actually look at their training history to look at their so-called workout journal. And then they can also add a note. Uh, and with adding a note, they can even submit a video of their training. So if you want them to record their last set, they can record their last set and upload it via the Team Builder app. Lastly, they can opt out of an exercise and cite if they were injured, prohibited, lacking equipment, or another reason. And then they can replace that exercise with a similar exercise, front squat, dumbbell goblet squat, so on and so on. So those are the ways that athletes access the training program. Once athletes start submitting data into Team Builder, this is where things get really fun. For instance, the team feed is going to post any time someone hits a new max or a personal best. Um, so a team feed can be shared amongst the team, and it's a way to keep the team in touch and accountable with each other if they're training remotely or even together. It's also a way for coaches to post in the team feed if you have to share videos or want to uh, share pictures, you can kind of think of it as like a Facebook feed within the strength and conditioning program. The team feed also converts into what we call TV mode. And TV mode is a screen that goes on a TV in the weight room, and it will automatically update as anyone sets a new PR in the weight room for an exercise. It will also tally the number of new PRs that day. So it's very common to see TV mode take place on like a max effort day or a test day in the weight room. Moving on, we do have something called whiteboard, which is a TV timer. So if you have TVs and you want to put your team on a cadence or a, a timed uh, circuit, then weight room view is a great way to do this. And essentially weight room view will allow you to create different groups and then you can rearrange the workout for each group. And that way you can dictate a flow in the weight room. Once you do that, you just set a time for working, for resting and transition, and then we'll cycle the team through stations uh, based on your work rest ratios. Moving on from that, we can talk about the maxes and PRs page. This is where athletes have access to their own PRs and where coaches can come in and look at athlete PRs as well. This also includes their charts and mapping out their strength over time. So these data points again are generated by either our one rep max formula or by the coach or athlete entering their result on a test day or a max day. Again, this is available on the mobile apps for athletes to view as well.
When I mentioned that athletes can submit video of themselves lifting, this is where coaches can view that. So if coaches want to look at athlete submissions on exercises, they can view a video and then they can reply to that. And this turns into a one-on-one -on -one dialogue between the coach and the athlete, uh, including video as well. So you can filter by athlete, you can filter by exercise, and you can also filter by athlete and exercise to view progression there as well. Next thing is the leaderboard. We can generate leaderboards based on groups. So for instance, if you want to group people by position group or by age, you can run leaderboards based on that. So if I wanted to run a leaderboard for the barbell back squat, I would just simply choose barbell back squat. I would say I want to run this for the football group, then hit next, and then we can select the time frame. So if I want the all-time leaderboard to show up, I can add that board, and we can actually add up to three boards on a single screen. So you might see schools uh, actually put um, the leaderboard up on a TV or run multiple leaderboards. And of course, as athletes submit new data to Team Builder, the leaderboards will update automatically. The last thing in workout tools is the evaluations module. So evaluations is a way for coaches to create a test. So for example, if you wanted to create a combine, you can just create all the items that come within a combine. So 40 yard dash measures for seconds. And then if we wanted to do the uh, uh, 135 pound bench press, we can add that and then that would store the number of reps, so on and so on. And then we can select the combine, select the athletes we want to test. In this case, we'll just use all athletes. And then we give you an input table. When you record data in the evaluations page, it will be formatted in a neat report that you can run in the reporting section. So for example, if you run a combine twice a year and you have a four-year athlete, you can run a report for that athlete over the course of four years and we'll give you all eight results on the combine in chronological order. Coming back to coach tools, we'll go over some couple of features. Goal setting allows you to set a goal for each athlete in terms of a time or a one rep max or body weight. And we could even use something called dynamic goal setting where you can set the goal for each athlete to be a multiple of their body weight. So if you want everyone to squat two times their body weight, you can type in that multiple and every athlete based on their body weight will be told what their squat goal is. Documents and links is a way for you to upload documents and links into Team Builder to be shared with a team or with all athletes, uh, very similar to Dropbox. Packets and Sheets allows coaches to print out training programs. So if you want the workout on a workout card, you can do that. You can also have everyone's prescribed load for primary exercise put onto one sheet. So you can post a single sheet to every weight rack and every athlete will see what their prescribed load is, what their rep reps for that day for a number of exercises. Attendance is attendance taking in the weight room. And then finally, we get to reporting, which is where we see most of the data submitted to Team Builder. So there are a lot of reports here, but I'll just run two. A progress report allows you to take a group of athletes, a date range, and then run a report uh, for the exercises of your choice. So in this case, we'll choose back squat and we'll choose the deadlift. So if I run this, I can get a chart mapping out everyone's progress for multiple exercises. This is called a progress report. It's exportable to PDF. The other report I'll run is based on our sports science questionnaires. So if you run a questionnaire report, you can grab a group of athletes and you can choose a questionnaire and then you can see what the results are for that questionnaire. So for example, the morning questionnaire, if I run it for yesterday, of the athletes who filled it out, I can see what their scores were. Uh, for instance, sleep hours, sleep quality, breakfast, and soreness. And then the color coding is based on the coach preference. So if a coach decides that seven or more hours is green, five hours or less is red, then you'll get green for seven or above, uh, or eight or above, you'll get yellow for six to seven, and anything five or under will show up as red. And you can do this for any question that you ask on the questionnaire. So many coaches run this report and they just look for red boxes. If they see that an athlete is uh, rendering a lot of red boxes for a day, then they know that their questionnaire result was poor for that day. Moving on from this, we do have a messaging section. So team builder messaging allows a coach to construct a message to an individual, a position group, uh, uh, even a, a whole sport or all athletes at once. 
And Team Builder messages send us push notifications on the mobile app. So for instance, if you wanted to send a push notification, you could also schedule it out into the future and you can set up a push notification to go out on a recurring basis. So if you want a push notification to go out at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, you can write that message and then set it up to be recurring from there on. The last thing we'll cover is what we call the online payments portal. So the online payments portal takes the programs that you build as a coach and it allows you to give it a price and put it up for sale. So in a team sport setting, what might be very common is coaches will take programs and then put them up for sale to their alumni. So the hundreds of athletes that graduate, what they can do is, is they can purchase the programming that they did in college for a certain price. And then that will go into a specific bank account. So coaches use this as a fundraising method. They use it as a way to create side income. But just know that all the programs you build in Team Builder can be put for sale. And you can allow people to train on Team Builder who are not even part of the program. So if someone does sign up for a training program on Team Builder via the online payments portal, they won't count towards your athlete count for the program they actually are paid for using a team builder fee of 10%. So they will not count towards your athlete count if you use the online payments portal. Again, this was a very fast overview. If you want a more comprehensive overview, I do recommend scheduling that 30-minute demo with us when you can.